quantum field theory and quantum electrodynamics, or QED, have intrigued scientists for decades. Born out of the intellectual prowess of a series of renowned minds, from the British scientist Paul Dirac, who coined the term quantum electrodynamics, to Heisenberg, Fermi, Oppenheimer, and particularly to three brilliant minds in the 1940s, Richard Feynman, Julian Schwinger, and Sinatiro Tomonaga, whose groundbreaking work painted a vivid picture of how light and matter interact, so revolutionary that it earned them a shared Nobel Prize in Physics in 1965. Quantum electrodynamics quickly became a cornerstone of modern physics. As with any scientific theory, the real test of quantum electrodynamics lies in its predictions and experimental confirmation. Over the years, QED has been poked, prodded, refined, and subjected to numerous tests, each one pushing the limits of our experimental capabilities and understanding of the quantum world. It has stood up to intense scrutiny and experiment after experiment, proving its robustness and resilience. Through this continuous process of questioning and refining, quantum field theory and quantum electrodynamics remain the cornerstone of our understanding of the quantum world. But as any seasoned scientist will tell you, there's never a final answer, only the next question. And in the realm of quantum electrodynamics, there are still many questions left to explore, motivating scientists to explore new methods and materials to put QED to the test. This brings us to the crux of our story. In a research article published last month in Nature, the most prestigious scientific journal in the world, scientists report results from the most stringent test of quantum electrodynamics ever performed. The state-of-the-art research in this field is being led by a team of dedicated and innovative scientists at the Max Planck Institute for Nuclear Physics in Heidelberg in Germany. Driven by the quest for knowledge, the pursuit of truth and the thrill of discovery, they have worked tirelessly to create an experimental setup capable of testing QED to unprecedented levels of precision. The method involves the use of TIN 49+, an element that offers unique advantages in the study of QED. Not only does TIN possess a high atomic number, making it an excellent subject for studying the effects of QED, but when stripped down to a single electron, it behaves remarkably like hydrogen, the simplest and most well-understood atom in the universe. This TIN 49 plus is thus called an hydrogen-like TIN, and is the heaviest hydrogen-like element ever synthesized. This similarity to hydrogen allows scientists to make very precise predictions about the behavior of hydrogen-like TIN based on our extensive knowledge of hydrogen's properties and theory. The team developed advanced techniques to create and isolate hydrogen-like tin ions and to experimentally measure their properties with extraordinary accuracy. Any deviation from the theoretical predictions could break the quantum field theory and signal new physics beyond QED, making hydrogen-like tin a powerful tool in the search for new fundamental laws of nature. So let's dive deeper into this fascinating experiment and see what the scientists have discovered. At the core of this test is a device known as an electron beam ion trap, or EBIT for short. This is a special type of trap that uses an electron beam to ionize and trap ions. Then ions are injected into the alpha trap set up for characterization. It's an incredibly versatile tool, capable of creating and confining highly charged ions, just like our hydrogen-like tin. In other words, we have a beam of electrons zooming through a vacuum at nearly the speed of light. These electrons are then directed towards tin atoms. As they collide, the tin atoms lose electrons, becoming positively charged ions. The more the atoms are bombarded, the more electrons they lose and the higher their charge state becomes. The goal here was to create a cloud of tin ions with just one electron left per tin atoms, kicking the other 49. It's a delicate balancing act. Too few collisions and the tin won't lose enough electrons too many, and it could lose that last precious electron we're so keen to study. It's an ionizing dance that requires precision and control. Now here's where the trap in electron beam ion trap comes into play. The electric field in these ions is really extreme, reaching a quadrillion volts per centimeter, so they must be held in place by a combination of electric and magnetic fields. This trap allows scientists to confine and study these highly charged ions in relative isolation, away from the influences that could skew the results. It's not just about creating these ions though. They also needed to measure their properties with high precision. For this, scientists turned to spectroscopy, the study of the interaction between matter and electromagnetic radiation. By shining a laser on the trapped ions and observing the light they emit, 
researchers can deduce a vast amount of information about their properties. In this case, the core property that the scientists were trying to measure and compare to the theory is the so-called G-factor. Now, the G-factor might sound like a strange scientific term, but in essence, it's a value that relates the magnetic moment of a particle to its angular momentum. And in this case, it was the G-factor of the electron in hydrogen-like tin that was under the microscope. But, as you can imagine, achieving high precision in such experiments is no small feat. It requires fine-tuning the conditions within the trap, the energy of the electron beam, and the wavelength of the laser. It's a challenge that requires both ingenuity and patience. Yet despite the intricacies and challenges, the team was undeterred. They knew that the rewards of this experiment could be immense. The potential to test one of the fundamental theories of physics, to probe the depths of the quantum world, was too enticing to resist. And so, with the trap primed and the laser tuned, they began their experiment. An experiment that would take them to the very edge of our understanding of the quantum world. An experiment that could potentially shake the very foundations of physics as we know it. With the stage set, it was time to see what the results would reveal. What unfolded next was a testament to the power of scientific inquiry. The team managed to measure this G-factor with an unprecedented level of precision down to nine significant figures. This level of accuracy is akin to measuring the distance from Earth to the Moon with an error margin of just a few millimeters. Absolutely mind-boggling, isn't it? But the real kicker comes when we compare these measurements to the predictions made by quantum electrodynamics. Did our famous theory hold up? In this case, amazingly, yes, it did hold up. The measured G-factor was found to be in excellent agreement with QED predictions. This may seem like a small detail, just a confirmation of something we already knew, but it's actually a huge deal. It confirms that quantum electrodynamics, and by extension the quantum field theory, remains a robust and reliable theory, even when pushed to its limits under extreme conditions. Richard Feynman once called quantum electrodynamics the greatest success in the physical sciences. If he could see these new results, he would be thrilled to see another victory for quantum field theory, standing strong even after a century. It's akin to finding a new piece in an infinitely complex cosmic puzzle, a piece that fits perfectly into place, enhancing the overall picture. It's always exciting when our theories hold up against rigorous testing. It reaffirms the robustness of our scientific methods and the validity of our theoretical frameworks. This work is clearly a landmark in the field of quantum electrodynamics, the culmination of countless years of meticulous work and dedication by the Max Planck Institute's experimental group a testament to their unwavering commitment to advancing our understanding of the universe. But what does it mean for the future of QED? What could push its limit even more? What will finally break it? These questions fuel our quest for knowledge, igniting our curiosity to probe even deeper into the mysteries of the quantum world, with all its strange phenomena and paradoxes which continue to captivate us. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear more, please consider to like, comment, share and subscribe to the channel. It will be deeply appreciated. Thank you and see you tomorrow.